everyone, welcome to a little uh, idea I had for the tag storage project. So it's a workshop that I created a little while ago and I wanted to give you a little bit of the background history of this workshop. It's available to buy from my um, Etsy shop or my blog and I'll give you the links at the end of this video. So it started out life and was designed because I love to make tags and I was working on this series of tags as you can see, an alphabet of Zentangle patterns. And I think you can see that this was a little labour of love and it's turned into a reference for me. So if I want to um, do something with a little bit of Zentangling, I can flick through these tags and I've got some patterns that I can work with. And I needed somewhere where I could store my tags that I could get easy access to them, somewhere where they could provide instant inspiration. And the Tag Storage Project works a treat. And I think you'll agree it's a little bit like a, a clothes rack for tags, a little bit of a, a wardrobe for your tag collection and it, it really has inspired lots and lots of ideas. So this one as you can see was entirely zentangled, it has a little bit of a different base to some of the others that you'll see but you get both versions on your um, tutorials, uh, you get both video and uh, photo instructions because I think it's always handy to have a little bit of written detail to go along with the videos that I make. I also play along every month with Tim Holtz's 12 Tags of 2013 and I'm having great fun uh, taking his insp inspiration and giving it my own personal twist but where to put these little works of art that we spend all this time creating and again I created myself another little tag storage project this, use, this time using Tim Holtz's um, craft resist papers and they were the perfect place to store my tags and uh, to give me that little bit of inspiration when I need it. I even made this one to give to Tim Holtz when I attended a workshop that he did in the UK so that he could have somewhere to store all the tags that he makes. So I've just finished teaching a workshop to make the tag storage project into something very Christmassy indeed and it makes the perfect Christmas tag countdown. So I'm using the Teresa Collins um, Christmas cottage papers but you can use any Christmas papers that you want if you decide to purchase the workshop for the tag storage project and this video is going to show you how to make the individual tags to give you some ideas because you can decorate them exactly how you like but the idea is that you have one tag for every day going uh, through the month of December leading up to the big Christmas celebration and each day you've got room on the back to add a photograph and some journaling of the preparations that you make on the run up to Christmas. So it really does turn into a lovely decoration and a lovely way to uh, document your Christmas this year. If you don't want to use it as a countdown as such and you don't want to take a photograph every day you could easily use it just to store the photographs that you take of the festivities this year. So you've got two choices of how to use the tags but either way I hope you'll agree that it turns into a fabulous uh, memento of Christmas that you can bring out every year to reminisce over Christmas's past. So if I've tempted you to uh, make this project for your Christmas this year, then you can use any of the Christmas papers that you have. Uh, obviously the workshop itself just deals with the construction of the tag storage project itself. And this video is a little extra bit that you'll need, but I'll show you some ideas on how to make those countdown tags. So as I said before, I used the Teresa Collins Christmas Cottage Collection, and I used her um, 12 by 12 collection pack. Um, that was just the uh, six by six pad so you could see the papers and one of the sheets of papers that you'll get have the numbers on them already so that's handy. If your papers don't I'm pretty sure you can either stamp the numbers or you could print them out on your computer but if you've got a collection of papers that you're using that have the numbers on and I've seen that others do then you're going to cut all the numbers from 1 to 25 out from those papers and the other advantage was it also had its own little journaling sheet or the sheet that I could cut up for all the journaling sections on the tags. So before we look at the actual detail of how I put the tags together I'm just going to give you a little run through of the tags that I've made so far so you get a little bit of inspiration on how to decorate and embellish the tags. So what I will be doing is taking my papers and using mixing and matching them to create um, the look that you see here on the tag. So the number goes on the front of the tag and on the back of the tag you have somewhere to put a photograph and somewhere to journal. But potentially if you only wanted photographs you could cover that entire area with a photo mat 
and uh, and do away with the journaling altogether but I think the journaling is quite a nice touch and as you can see I've used the lined paper from the Teresa Collins collection to add this little section to the bottom of each of my tags. So I'm trimming up with uh, pretty ribbons that match my papers and I'm just trying out little different ways of doing it. Sometimes I tie a bow, sometimes I've added buttons you just need to be a little bit careful about dimension. You want your 25 tags still to fit into your um, project when it's finished. So I found that I've got some bulkier embellishments like this one here, which is a Dazzler from Creative Expressions. And sometimes I've gone a little bit flatter and I've just got gems. So I've added gem gems to this ribbon here. And I've also tied the ribbon at the side so the bulk isn't all at the front of the tag. And the only other thing that you have to think about when you're decorating your tags is just to make sure that any embellishments that you add are well away from the little hole that you'll insert the tag onto the storage unit. So I've made sure that this little flower doesn't um, overlap the hole where the barbecue skewer will be inserted. And on each of my tags I've embellished the papers with stickles to give it a little bit of holiday sparkle and I did get to the point where I thought you know what I'm going to repeat some of these patterns I think it looks quite nice so as you can see here I've repeated some of the paper combinations maybe adding a little of a different twist with the paper but as you can see that the um, papers that I've used are the same but they may be embellished slightly differently other things that you could think about adding would be things like glossy accents um, as you can see I've used buttons here, you could also use brads, I've used gems, you could use pearl drops um, and once again I did say that I've stickled all of my papers so that they've got that little bit of Christmas bling. I'm going to show you how to put each of your tags together. All the tags are made in exactly the same way and all of the tags are used made using double-sided papers. So I'm working on the premise that you'll use double-sided Christmas papers too. I've chosen to work with three colours of plain cardstock that go with my Christmas papers. I've got the red, the cream and the green. And all your base cards measure three inches by six inches. So I suggest once you've chosen the colours you're going to use that you cut all of these tags at the same time. So I've cut an even, apart from uh, obviously number 25, number of tags in each of the three colours that I've used. So I've got 25 base tags measuring three by six inches. So once your base tags are cut, you're going to think about cutting up your pattern papers. I suggest you put away three papers first, and they're the papers that you want to cover and construct your tag storage project with. And I also put aside a paper that was suitable for my numbering and journaling. But other than that, I use the rest of the paper pack to create the um, decorations on my tags. I've given two measurements for the pattern papers for these tags because um, one of them is a little bit easier to cut than the other. Uh, the first one is two and three quarter inches by five and three quarter inches, but the measurement that I'm using is um, using sixteenths, and I've cut mine to measure two and thirteen sixteenths by uh, five and thirteen sixteenths. And the reason for that is because it just gives a little bit of a finer border. So if you choose to use the three quarter measurement, you'll get a slightly chunkier border than you see or you will see on this video. So once you've cut a mix, mixture of pattern papers um, at the measurement that you've chosen to use, you're ready to begin uh, shaping the top of your first tag. And we will measure and cut one and then use that as the template to cut the rest. Whichever measurement you've decided to use, just center the top uh, of your tag on your ruler. So I'm centering it centering it as if it was a three inch tag. So once you've got it centered you're going to mark the one and two inch points on the top of your tag. So I've got an even gap on each side uh, of the three inch measurement and then I've marked it at one and two inches on the top of the tag. And then I'm going to do the same at the side of the tag. I'm going to mark one inch down on the left and one inch down on the right. And that gives me the points that I can join together and uh, I'm going to do that with a pencil line. You can join them together and then cut those sections of the paper away to create your tag shape. 
So what, as you can see, once you've got one tag shape, you can use it to cut all the rest of the 25 tags. Once you've measured and cut your first tag, you can use that as a template to cut the rest of the tags. Can see a little bit easier here I used white on white there so I'm just flipping my tag over so you can see literally just lining the tags up and cutting away those corners and then you're going to use the pattern tags that you've cut to cut the base tags down to size so I'm literally going to do this by eye so I'm center centering the tag on the base tag and then I'm cutting the corners away so that I leave an even border all the way round, all the way round the patterned paper tag. And I'm just going to be walking you through three tags, but you would repeat this process on all 25 tags, mixing and matching the bases with the papers. So for this green tag, I'm going to use a cream card base and then just trimming off the corners. And then it's time to uh, do any inking that you want to do on your project. And I've chosen to ink all my project, so I'm inking all the edges of my tags, particularly on this paper because it does have a white core and I think it um, uh, helps with the vintage look that I'm going for. So I'm just lightly inking all of the edges with Vintage Photo Distress Ink. On the base tag, because you're going to be able to see both sides, I'm inking both sides of the tag. It may seem a little bit tedious um, after you get to number 25, but uh, it's worth the effort, I think, and uh, it just is a nice uh, finishing touch to each of your tags. And as you can see by my change of sleeves, I've uh, uh, continued videoing this on another day. Now I'm going to show you how to create this uh, two pattern effect. So you start out with one piece of paper and because they're double sided, you're going to trim the bottom and flip it. And you may well notice that when I flip that paper over, the writing was upside down, but don't worry, um, because when I flip the paper, I can turn the little oblong that I get up the other way. So. You might want to pay attention to any directional papers that you've got uh, when you trim them into the tag shape so that the paper on the back is the right way round. I suggest you are a little bit methodical about keeping your tags together in their groups, particularly when you slice off the bottom. So you want to slice uh, one and a half inches off the bottom of each of your pattern papers. I'm only working with three here, but uh, you can see that if you had a great big pile of 25, you might mix them up so uh, as you work just keep them neatly in a pile and you're going to trim one and a half inches off the bottom of each of your patterned papers. So remember to re-ink the little panels as you attach them to the bottom of your card because you are in effect flipping them over and then you're going to use double sided tape to attach them to your tags. Because I decided to use the music side of this as the main portion of the tag I've had to re-ink the tag because originally I was using the dotty and I'm just removing a couple of pencil marks I had left over on the top of the tag. So it's just a case of mixing and matching those double sided papers and attaching them to the fronts of all of your tags. And if my last one if you remember the um, writing on the back of the tag was upside down but because I'm using the green for the front and the writing for the bottom and the bottom is an oblong I can just flip that bottom section so that the writing is the right way up. Next I'm going to show you the number section which I created little um, stamp effects with my decal edge scissors so I'm working on tags 13, 14 and 15. So if you don't have papers like mine that have the numbers already printed on them, you're going to need to create that um, number base. So you want 25 numbers, all that measure one and a half inches square. And they're all mounted on papers, printed papers, that measure one and three quarter inches square. If you're not so good with your decalage scissors, you could cut the amounts for the back of your numbers slightly bigger. So uh, 
that I considered that I'm going to get away with cutting my squares at one and three quarter inches but cut them at two inch square if you just need that little bit of extra leeway when you're using your deckle edge scissors. So I'm picking contrasting papers to the base tags and then I'm mounting the numbers directly on top of the uh, pattern squares and then I'm using my deckle edge scissors to trim them so they look like stamps. A little bit of ink and then I'm attaching them to my tags using foam pads. So I am going to put all of my um, numbers in exactly the same place. They're roughly one and a half inches from the join line where the two papers um, split and uh, the two contrasting papers meet. I'm measuring up from that line at one and a half inches. If you don't want to keep measuring you can do what I'm doing here which is just using uh, a tag that already has a number attached and then lining it up with the uh, edge of my ruler. I'm going to show you how to um, make the little holes and reinforcers that are on the top of each of the tags. So you're going to start out by measuring the position of the first hole. Now because my tags are already punched I'm not actually going to do this I'm just going to tell you the measurements. So you're going to measure across the top of your tag which is one inch and you're going to find the halfway point at half an inch and then you're going to come down half an inch and make a little dot and the in this instance I'm just going to be using the tag that I'd marked previously and you will do that once you've marked your first tag so it's half an inch from the top and right in the center which is half an inch from the edge of the tag and then from there you can mark all of your tags from the first tag that you punch and that way they're all going to match and I'm just using the tag that I punched earlier and I've marked the position with a little pencil dot and then I'm using the large hole on my crocodile. If the hole's too small you won't get your barbecue skewer and ribbons through so just decide on um, the implement that you're using to make the holes in your tag make sure that the holes are big enough to allow for a little bit of ribbon to go through and for the barbecue skewer where you're eventually going to hang your Christmas tag countdown. Now I like to make little reinforcers to go on the top of all of my tags. It's something that I've always done. I think it just adds a nice contrast and makes it look like those postal tags that these uh, tags are, of course, based on. So once you've punched all the holes in the tops of your tag, you're ready to make those reinforcers. And I've tended to try and make them either to contrast the paper or to match the papers that I've used to back my numbers with so that's what I'm going to do here so starting out with a scrap of paper I'm going to punch two holes leave enough space so that you can punch them again with a one and a half inch circle punch so I've got the two holes to make the two reinforcers one for the front of the tag and one for the back and then flipping your circle punch that's upside down use your half inch circle punch center the hole that you punch previously and punch again to create the little washer or reinforcers that are going to sit at the top of your tag and I'm inking the edges of all of my reinforcers before I glue them in position on the top of my tag and then I'm using a little bit of glue and I always like to just use a pencil or a pokey tool just to make sure that they're lined up And you're going to repeat this process for all of your tags. So apart from the ribbons and embellishments which I will add later, we're ready to begin work on the backs of the tags, the places where we'll put the photos and the journaling. So as I said before, I'm using this paper for my journaling. You might have plain paper that you want to uh, write direct on or you might have something similar to this pieces of note paper that you might want to use for the base of your tags again I'm going to give you two measurements one which is the easy one which is one and a half by two and three quarters and the other one which I am using which is one and a half inches deep by uh, two and thirteen sixteenths wide 
So in effect, it mirrors the pattern piece of paper that we flipped at the bottom of the fronts of our tags. So the proportions are the same. I suggest you cut all of your journaling pieces in one go. So you need 23 pieces all together and I'll uh, tell you in a moment why. We're going to um, ink all of the edges of our 23 journaling pieces and we can attach them to the bottoms of the tags. First of all, we're going to cut the photo mounts. So using contrasting papers to your base tags, but still using your plain card stock, you're going to cut the photo mounts that are going to sit above these journaling sections. So the two measurements for the photo mounts are three and a half inches deep by two and three quarter inches wide. That's if you're using the easy measurement. If you're using the same measurement as me, I'm using three and a half inches by two and thirteen sixteenths for the width of the photo mount. Once again, I'm only working on 23 tags. So one to 23 will have this photo um, layout. So we'll have a space for journaling and space for a photograph. So I'm ready to attach those, ink the edges and attach them with double-sided tape. So whilst I'm uh, putting those two pieces onto the backs of my tags, I'm gonna tell you the measurements of a single photo mount. If you don't want any journaling, instead of doing what I'm doing here, you're going to cut from contrasting cardstock the photo mounts that measure um, either two and three quarter inches by four and three quarter inches, or if you're using the measurement I'm using, two and thirteen sixteenths by four and three quarters. And then you're going to ink those and attach them to the backs of your tags in place of the photo and journaling mounts that I'm putting on the back of my tags here. Now the reason I've been telling you only to work on 23 of your tags is that 24 and 25 are kind of special days and you might have a couple of extra photos you want to put on to those final tags of this countdown. So I'm going to show you how to make a double photo mount. So again using that uh, width measurement that might alter two and three quarters or two and thirteen sixteenths and this time we're doubling the single photo mount so whereas the single photo mount is four and three quarters now we're going to cut um, at nine and a half inches so if you fold that in half you get this little booklet effect and we can put more photos onto tags 24 and 25. Now there's room for three photographs once you've attached this to your tag, but if you want to add journaling, you can either use the small block that we've been using, or you can choose to write a little bit more, in which case cut your journaling blocks for these two tags so that they're the same as the single photo mount. So that's two and three quarters by four and three quarters, or two and thirteen sixteenths by four and three quarters. So this will give you a little bit more room for photographs and journaling on the back of those final two tags, number 24 and number 25. As you can see for the purposes of this video, I'm going to quickly change this uh, tag number to number 25. And then I'm going to attach that double photo mount to the back of tag number 25. So if you've been following my suggestions and have been batch making your tags, uh, you will have all your tags finished at this point and we're ready to begin the decoration. And I suggest your next step is to stickle the pattern papers if you want to. So I'm adding a little bit of sparkle to mine. I'm not going to do it on this video because obviously they would have to dry, but I'm just going to show you that all I did was take my stickles and I picked three colours, a burgundy, a diamond stickles and a green and then I just picked out little elements in my pattern papers so I've just highlighted each of the circles on the base paper and then the top paper I've just picked little dots of uh, diamond stickles just to highlight the patterned paper and bring a little bit of Christmas bling so some burgundy stickles on this one and then I highlighted the snowflakes with some diamond stickles so I'm going to assume all my stickles are dry and I'm going to show you how to do some of the ribbon effects that I've put onto the tags. So for tag number 25, you're going to have a little bit of a uh, twist to the normal uh, decorations because we're going to have 
the ribbon embellishment finishing at the back of the tag in order to hold that double photo mount in place. So begin by trimming a length of ribbon roughly um, 16 inches in length. In the centre of that piece of ribbon I'm tying another little piece of ribbon and I'm just going to trim the ends into a point so that they don't fray and then I'm going to repeat that process so I get a little bit of a double uh, knot effect in the centre of the tag. And knotting directly one on top of the other and then just trimming the ends so that they match the first, the length of the first knot. And to attach the ribbon to this side of the card, I'm just putting a little strip of double-sided tape to either edge, avoiding that knot area because that's where the ribbon pinches in a bit and you don't want the double-sided tape to show. And then you can detach the ribbon so that the knot sits centrally on the front of the tag and then you're going to flip your tag over and just tie a bow to secure the photo mount that's on the back of the tag in position. That stops it flapping around when it's hanging in the tag storage and it looks quite pretty too. I'm just trimming the ends of the ribbon to fit and then all that's left to do to finish this tag is to add the um, little ribbon to the top of the tag. And again because I'm mimicking the bow that I've used on the back of the tag I'm going to tie a bow in the top of the tag. and then trim the ends. So at this point my tag or my papers on my tag are uh, have the stickles and they're all dry and I'm just going to add those final little bits of glitz and I'm using some contrasting gems so they look like little brads holding the numbers in position and then I wanted something extra special to add that final touch of bling to those last couple of tags. Now I could have used this Dazzler, but I just happened to have um, a new delivery of stock and Creative Expressions have brought out another range of these little finishing touches. And these ones look a little bit like snowflakes, so I'm going to uh, use those. And then I like to attach these with a little bit of uh, silicone glue so that they are nice and firm and not going to drop off by the time you take this little tag arrangement out next year. Just remember to avoid the hole and I'm just lifting that up so that the um, little jewel doesn't uh, encroach on the hole where I'm going to post the barbecue skewer. Now although you would have done this before, I'm just going to show you that it is possible to stickle after you have added all your ribbons just got to be a little bit careful and I'm just using my diamond stickles to add a little bit of sparkle to all of the polka dots on the bottom of this Christmas tag. So as I put my tags into my tag storage which you can see looks rather lovely and it's going to make a fab addition to my Christmas decorations this year I really hope that I've inspired you to want to make one of these of your own which of course would mean that you'd have to nip across to either my blog or to my Etsy shop to purchase your online workshop. So the Tag Storage Project is available for you with full video instructions and it also comes with photo instructions. So you've got everything you need with all the measurements written down so that you can make this project. I'm also going to attach a um, PDF which gives you the measurements, both sets of measurements to make these tags. Plus, of course, you will have free access to this video to show you how to make the Christmas tags for this particular project. You'll be able to keep an eye on my blog or this um, YouTube channel because I'll be sharing with you other ideas as I get them to use this fun storage unit. So for those of you that don't know, as well as sharing these free videos on my YouTube channel, I also sell online workshops over at my Etsy shop or my blog for more complicated projects like this tag storage unit and I really hope that I've inspired you to pop along there to buy your instructions you'll get full video instruction as well as photo instructions that you can print off if you want to 
that has all the measurements written down to help you make this project for your family so that you will be able to do what I'm going to do this year. I'm really looking forward to filling this up with a Christmas countdown that I can take out year on year. It makes a wonderful addition to your home, uh, your Christmas home decor and I'm sure you're going to have great fun making it. So until next time, Merry Christmas and thank you for watching.